The Easter celebration that we practice today has a very sacred uh, meaning to our Western culture and civilization. Here in America, uh, we will see our churches fill to capacity while gentlemen walk in with their most handsome suits, ladies adorn their most beautiful dresses, while children learn their Easter speeches and uh, perform all their great talents so that we can commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And there are hunts for these little magic treasures all around the nation. But where did this celebration come from? Is this celebration biblical? And as we celebrate this Easter occasion, who does it benefit? Well, you want to stick around because you know I want to talk about it. Let's go. The blood that Jesus shed. Welcome to The Ready Brew. My name's T. Edge, King Beaker for The Brew. Um, and today uh, we are talking about the Easter celebration. Um, but before we get started, I'm going to ask that you click that little button down there um, and subscribe to the channel um, because it helps immensely get this information out there. But um, today we celebrate Easter in place of the Passover, which is a biblical event. Um, and we need to see what the scripture says about Passover. So beginning at Exodus chapter number 12, beginning at verse 3. Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And thus you shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses wherein you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So this feast known as Passover was supposed to be something that was forever celebrated, not replaced, but forever celebrated. However, when the Christian church arose, the Passover was replaced by Easter. And Easter was in fact a feast of celebration. Let's go and see what the early historians had to say about this feast known as Easter. In the book, the Greek ecclesiastical historians of the first six centuries of the Christian era in six volumes. At the bottom of page 221, chapter 23, it says, our English word Passover happily in sound and sense almost corresponds to the Hebrew of which is a translation. The Greek Pascha formed from the Hebrew is the name of the Jewish festival applied invariably in the primitive church to designate the festival of the Lord's resurrection which took place at the time of the Passover. Our word Easter is of Saxon origin. So the word Easter comes from the European tribe slash nation known as Saxons or Saxon. Midway of page 222, it says, Hence there were synods and convocation of the bishops on this question, and all unanimously drew up an ecclesiastical decree 
which they communicated to all the churches in all places, that the mystery of the Lord's resurrection should be celebrated on no other day than the Lord's day, and that on this day alone we should observe the close of the Paschal Fast. In the book, The Ecclesiastical History, a history of the church in seven books uh, by Socrates, translated by the church, on page 43, one of the letters written to the churches by Constantine after the Council of Nicaea. He writes, there's also the question having been considered relative to the most holy day of Easter. It was determined by common consent that it would be proper that all should celebrate it on one and the same day everywhere. For what can be more appropriate or what more solemn than that this feast from which we have received the hope of immortality that this feast from which we have received the hope of immortality should be invariably kept in one order and for an obvious reason among all. It seemed very unsuitable in the celebration of this sacred feast that we should follow the custom of the Jews. But wait a minute, I thought that God told the Jews that this should be a feast forever. Constantine further writes, let us then have nothing in common with the most hostile people, the Jews. And it is noted that since then, it was desirable that this should be so amended that we should have nothing in common with the nation of parasites and those who slew their Lord. So the Easter feast replaced the Passover because the Christian church wanted no ties to the Hebrews or the Jews who the Passover was given to. They believed that Jesus had now come and give the priesthood to the Gentile church in place of the Jews. Socrates gave his own opinion in chapter number 22 on page 399. I may perhaps be permitted here to make a few reflections on Easter. It appears to me that neither the ancients nor moderns who have affected to follow the Jews have had any rational foundation for contending so obstinately about it. For they have altogether lost sight of the fact that when our religion superseded the Jewish economy, the obligation to observe the Mosaic law and the ceremonial types ceased. So even Socrates, a man who claimed to have no religious affiliation, still held to the Christian or Catholic ideologies that the Jewish economy and ceremonies had ceased because Christ had now given right or priesthood to the Gentiles. He further writes on page 402, but all other Christians in the Western parts, as far as the ocean itself, I found to have celebrated Easter after the equinox from a very ancient tradition. It becomes us to have nothing in common with the perfidious Jews. So instead of following the Passover that God had intended, they now decided to follow the Easter feast after the Gentile or European customs that came from as far as Saxony because to them, the priesthood had now come to the Gentiles. So they were to keep Gentile customs to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Forward to page 38. We have also gratifying intelligence to communicate to you relative to unity of judgment on the subject of the most holy feast of Easter. For this point also has been happily settled through your prayers, so that all the brethren of the East who have heretofore kept the festival when the Jews did, will henceforth conform to the Romans and to us, and to all who have from the earliest time have observed our period of celebrating Easter, which was the celebration of the equinox. The Eastern celebration is European at best, a people who were presumptuous enough to think that the priesthood flowed through Christ unto them. 
when in fact Christ is our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So, does it hurt to celebrate Easter? Well, I'll let you decide. It's up to you, honestly. It doesn't bring us closer to Christ. As the writer in this text uh, imposed, this feast does not make us holy at all. It's just a celebration. Who benefits? Well, as I continue to do my studies and my research, the benefactor of this Easter celebration is undoubtedly the church, the Catholic church. And it doesn't matter um, if you're Baptist, if you're Methodist, if you're African American Methodist, um, if you are uh, Holiness, um, if you're Seventh-day Adventist, if you are Mormon, um, if you're Jehovah's Witness, uh, if you're whatever denomination, you are considered a Protestant. Protestants come from the Roman Catholic Church. The only thing that was changed was the worship of Mary, the giving of um, indulgences uh, for a price, uh, the worship or, or validation of the iconography that comes through the church in part because we still worship the cross. All other things, all the teachings, everything that was uh, given as far as their quote unquote leaders um, has pa have passed on through the centuries, we're still mimicking the same thing. So uh, at your heart of hearts, you are Catholics, whether you believe it or not. The realization is that until we start reading the scripture, understanding who God is from the scripture and not from the teachings that man told us had no further deciphering. Although Paul himself told us that we see through a glass darkly, we're yet told that the canon is closed and there can be no further interpretation. And that comes from a church who has for the last 2000 years had a hold on the entire world and a grip on society. But if you think I got something wrong, um, leave those comments down below. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, um, you can reach me at theruddybrew at gmail.com. Um, I'd like to thank you once again for joining me here at The Ready Brew. And until the next time, peace. That gives me strength from